Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary, and I am here with Brett. We are talking about another pop culture conspiracy today. And I feel strongly about this one because it's not so much a conspiracy as it is a lot of factual truth that has been suppressed and twisted by the media in order to frame Kanye as insane and a maniac and also make money off of framing him that way. The public interest in Kanye has not waned at all. I see that TMZ right now is airing a documentary about him called Unhinged but Unstoppable. And they've been following him closely, all of his instability and his confusing statements in the last couple of years. He is unstoppable. He just sold out the United Center in seven minutes. Right. His fame has not waned at all, even though he's lost so many uh, connections and so much money. Following all of his behavior and all of his statements from last year and the year before, I think a lot of people just feel that there is remaining an unanswered question that Kanye brought up, which is who is Harley Pasternak? And the idea of handlers in Hollywood. Yes, and are there other people like Harley Pasternak who are handlers for celebrities in this industry? Um, And also, what was Harley Pasternak's involvement in Kanye's past or present breakdowns? as they're framed in the media. And I saw this tweet from Candace Owens recently where she said, we also never discussed enough how absolutely insane the messages Harley Pasternak sent to Kanye were and how crazy that Pasternak's career was not at all impacted by it. So that's why I wanted to use this video to piece together what we can, what is publicly available to try to come up with an answer to that question of who the hell is this guy? Um, But that's only what's publicly available. So the rest is up to speculation, I guess. A lot of people just walked away from it feeling like if there are Hollywood handlers or MKUltra handlers in this industry, Harley, they would look like Harley Pasternak. They would have backgrounds like Harley Pasternak. So let's just look into who Harley Pasternak is according to Harley Pasternak first. Uh, And let's go straight to the source. I went to his website and we may not be able to know the full list of clients for someone like Jeffrey Epstein, but he advertises his client list right there on harleypasternak.com. So let's look at some of the examples. Uh, Ariana Grande, Lady Gaga, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kim Kardashian even. Uh, Will Ferrell, Amy Schumer, Adam Levine, Rihanna, Megan Fox, Miley Cyrus, Robert Pattinson, Jessica Simpson, Katy Perry, Tobey Maguire, Robert Downey Jr., Mac Miller. Okay, that's kind of weird. Um, Brittany Murphy. That's also kind of weird. Kinda it also strange. shows how long he's been around. Brittany Lizzo. <laughs> Brittany Murphy died such a long time ago. It shows he's not he's yes. new to this. Yes. Yeah. He's a, a long time industry professional. He's worked with he's also, so many he's like A-listers. A, a regular contributor on like the Today Show and Good Morning America. And yes. Stuff like that. He's he's what actually what what people in this industry call an expert. He's always been framed in such a flattering light. Oh, and another one of them is Elliot Page, who is still listed as Ellen Page on his website. Get that updated if you see this Harley Pasternak. Um, but he lists himself as a fitness and nutrition specialist. He's written eight books. Trained many high profile clients for the past 26 years and has helped shape bodies for various film and television projects. And I saw that he even quoted Kim Kardashian on his ep- on his website saying, I live for Harley's smoothies. They're so easy to make, help me feel full, and they taste incredible. Personal trainer on movies going all the way back to 2001. Uh, mm-hmm. Halle Berry for tons of movies. Yeah. Miljovic, tons of actors and actresses. Right, yes. And uh, according to his Wikipedia, He was born in Toronto, Canada, and he later moved to Los Angeles to pursue a career in the fitness industry. He graduated from York Mills Collegiate Institute and holds an honors degree in kinesiology from the University of Western Ontario and a master's degree in exercise physiology and nutritional sciences from the University of Toronto. Here's an interesting part. 
During his time at University of Toronto, Harley Pasternak served as a nutrition and exercise scientist at the Department of National Defense's Defense and Civil Institute for Environmental Medicine for two years, from 2005 to 2007. And as a scientist, he focused on performance physiology and nutrition with a speciality in caffeine and ephedrine. So I looked into what this de department is. It's basically a civilian institute that supports the Canadian military. So contrary to some belief, he is not connected to the CIA, but I guess this could be compared to the equivalent of our DHS yeah. here in the US. Uh, so what do they really do? Uh, and what would Harley Pasternak do if he's working as a scientist for defense research in Canada? They list some of their research areas as human systems integration, social and psychological factors that affect the resolution of conflict, psychology of malicious intent, social and cultural factors influencing behavior, human performance in stressful environments. That's kind of interesting. It doesn't really sound like he's just looking into the, uh, you know, effects of drinking kombucha or <laughs> well the, the interesting thing is like look if if the stuff that we'll talk about later ha doesn't come out then sure you could look at this as the natural progression of somebody who started in one industry and moved to another one yeah. that was more lucrative and certainly more front-facing with a lot more public exposure but it's the text messages that we'll get into later we'll get into that, that, yeah. that show you just how nefarious something like this could be and put uh the the type of start that he had into perspective yeah, so in his own words, I would like to show a clip yep. of an interview he did where he talked about his work for the Canadian military Here we go. testing the effects of certain drugs. Enough to have him as my graduate advisor. And the area of, that I was interested in was how drugs and food affect muscular performance. And or when you say drugs, are that like performance enhancing drugs? Or are they all, all kinds of drugs? Oh, right, okay. So working for the military, I wasn't governed by the same laws that the typical person was, so I could look at the impact of certain drugs that are not that are not everyday things. So we looked at a drug called modafinil, okay. which was for narcoleptics. So if you give a soldier this um, drug, uh, how long could they stay awake for without uh, having any health detriment? <coughs> Is that, is that used now as a, one of these brain drugs? I've, I've, I've heard the name before somewhere. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's very interesting. Modafinil, it will keep you awake, but it's not a stimulant. Really? So if a special forces person has to stay awake for three nights waiting for the right opportunity to do whatever they have to do, we could give them modafinil and it would keep them alert. I did uh, research on a drug called acetazolamide, which is for use at high altitude so you don't get altitude sit. Yeah, so that's just a piece in his own words of what he was doing. And he was talking about the effects of exhaustion, which is something interesting to hold on to as we move forward in the timeline to 2016. This was when Kanye had his first hospitalization. He got 5150, handcuffed in an ambulance and taken to UCLA Medical Center for a psych evaluation. And at the time of the onset of this breakdown, which was the first of others, he was at Harley Pasternak's home. And uh, note that in these text messages that Kanye posted later, Harley threatened to have him institutionalized again. Now, Kim Kardashian was in charge of all of the medical decisions for Kanye during this time. Mm -hmm. When he did an interview with Charlemagne the God later on, he said this was one of the most traumatizing experiences of his life. He said that he was worried they were going to take his children away. He also said he was worried that they were going to drug and kill him. And, you know, from the outside, he's just being framed as this crazy person with delusions and paranoias. But is he around people with his best in interests at heart? It doesn't look like it. Even if you are struggling mentally, it's not helpful mentally to be around people whose intentions are dubious at best and nefarious at worst. Mm -hmm. And in order to explain this away, they blamed it on exhaustion. Mm -hmm. 
that's the, that's <laughs> and the go sleep to deprivation. Ex- that's the go-to excuse in Hollywood too. Like when actors have to go into rehab for drugs, they always uh, they always list it as they go in to get help for exhaustion. Yes, you know? yeah, that's what they blamed it on. And he talked about how he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder after that breakdown, and he was drugged with lithium. And they had, it took four days, they said, to come up with the quantity in which they wanted to dose him with because of the dose uh, was so high. Mm-hmm. They said they were embarrassed of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something he talked about when he was here yep. two years ago on Timcast IRL before he walked out of the room. <laughs> but um, before that interview ever happened, he did post these incredibly concerning screenshots, which were allegedly text messages from Harley Pasternak. Here's what Harley said in that screenshot, which is now deleted off of his Twitter page. I'm going to help you one of a couple ways. First, you and I sit down and have a loving and open conversation, but you don't use cuss words and everything that is discussed is based in fact and not some crazy stuff that dumb friend of yours told you or you saw in tweet. Second option, I have you institutionalized again where they medicate the crap out of you and you go back to zombie land forever. Playdate with the kids just won't be the same. And when he posted this screenshot, Kanye added a caption. What should be obvious by now is that I was raised to stand for my truth regardless of the consequences. So I will say this again, I was mentally misdiagnosed and nearly drugged out of my mind to make me a manageable, well-behaved celebrity. Makes you think of Britney Spears, who of course went through something very similar during her conservatorship. The only thing that could make me more suspicious of Harley Pasternak than I am now is if I saw Britney Spears on that client list, but she was not there. Uh, And Kanye followed this up at the time with another tweet showing Harley Pasternak's Wikipedia page in a screenshot, and he captioned it. I was told that if I expose the truth of the bad business practices, everything is going to be taken away from me, including my black children. And everyone has bore witness to the public Emmett Tilling of yay, but God has put something on my heart, knocked back down. And then he posted another text chain that was chain that was allegedly from harley pasternak um and he said this shows harley admitting to knowing the truth of our origin but then later dismissing the facts within the same text chain mind you this is how a hollywood trainer speaks to a far more influential black celebrity when we get out of line there's an interesting question here okay so we're we're entertaining this idea hollywood handler sure okay then you have to ask the question is handling on behalf of whom are we mm-hmm. talking on behalf of record labels are we talking on behalf of of shoe sponsors are we talking on behalf of like some type of special interest group there's a lot of questions here that you know there aren't necessarily it's not a clean answer but the question is what gives somebody like that a hollywood trainer the right to speak to an unbelievably famous, unbelievably powerful celebrity that way. If you've ever watched a movie or a television show, you know that that's not the order in which this happens. It is the celebrity who speaks to the trainer that way, right. not vice versa. Yeah, and even in as late as 2022, Kanye was in this interview with Tucker Carlson where he mentioned Harley Pasternak and called him a friend, a friend of his. Mm-hmm. Um, is Kanye being pressured or coerced to remain publicly on good terms with this man? Because I can imagine that if I were in his position and anyone spoke to me this way, or if anyone had me institutionalized wrongfully years ago, I would not be to this day calling them a friend or speaking of them Mm -hmm. in a positive light. So that on its own is confusing. It just seemed like Kanye dropped these screenshots and wouldn't elaborate it further. It is fair to point out that, look, screenshots are very easy to fake. That's that, like, true. That's but at the same time, if they were faked screenshots, why didn't Harley Pasternak respond yeah. to the allegation? Why wouldn't Kanye get a defamation lawsuit instantly? That is supposed to be a career ruining revelation mm-hmm. about him, especially because he works with so many other mm-hmm. A-lister clients. But he didn't respond. And TMZ also neglected to report on this, even though they so closely follow everything else having to do with Kanye, even up until the present day here in 2024. And 
we were hoping that when Kanye showed up to this very building for an appearance on Timcast IRL, that he was going to finally elaborate and tell the full unfiltered story of who Harley Pasternak is or was and why he was involved with him. So he briefly spoke about Harley Pasternak on that short period when he, like before he stormed out on that episode of IRL. I just wanted to show that clip because uh, Luke Rakowski was specifically asking about Harley Pasternak and hoping to hear more about him. Here's what yeah. Kanye said. Ending. I'm not going to go through another, like I'm literally going to walk the F off the show if I'm sitting up here having a, you know, talk about you can't say that it was Jewish people that did it when every sensible person knows that I mean John Stewart knows what happened to me and they took it too far it was like American History X like my head was on the side of the curve and the exact people that I called out kicked my head we found out that my trainer was a MK Ultra uh Canadian uh, intelligence. He, was, uh, yeah. he worked in the defense research and uh, development uh, in the Canadian military, essentially working on psyops this in the guy? Canadian military. This is Harley Pasternak. <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying is, look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them, how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly? It took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount, right? And I refused to take this, right? You understand that if I had taken the medication, I would not be here and it would have been, woe is, he was deeply troubled. We miss him. We love his music, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also note that um, Britney Spears was medicated with lithium, too. Mm -hmm. And to this day, she acts erratically, unrecognizable from her former self. She doesn't seem very self-aware when she's posting on social media. Well, it's, it's one thing to take the medication if you yourself go and seek treatment for something. It's a whole yeah. other thing. Like you said, Kanye wasn't in charge of the medical decisions in that household. It's, he said that Kim was exclusively making medical decisions at that time before when he was first uh, diagnosed. And it's a very hard uh, hole to get out of when you get misdiagnosed for something. Now that's, I'm assuming that that's, you know, I'm taking that on their face, he was misdiagnosed. And once you get put down a rabbit hole like that, it's very hard to crawl out of that. If not impossible, yes. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're being um, put on such strong psychiatric medication, especially if it's for a prolonged period of time, which seems to be the case with Britney Spears, there comes a point of no return where you can't get back to your former self. And if today in 2024, Kanye seems to be, uh, you know, con having confusing behavior, confusing statements but if he's that don't seem the, like himself. If he's not taking the medication now, look, I, I, I'm not one to say that I don't think Kanye doesn't have something going on. I, th I think that a lot of people believe that. And I think that erratic behavior isn't all just you know like explained away by this one situation um certainly goes deeper than that there's elements to this that we'll just never know because we're not privy to his medical history nor should we be uh but in a lot of ways it's still it's become public interest because of how many outbursts there have been and how he connects to a person like this my biggest question is still what allows a personal trainer to talk to somebody like that and who are they acting on behalf of? Now, most of those other actors that you named in that segment, they were, uh, that, that said like, I worked with this person for this. They were hired by studios sure. to work with them on behalf of movies that were they were making. But Kanye wasn't making a movie. Kanye is a, a musician. So I guess you could say getting him in shape to go on tour. Well, perhaps. what about other situations? For instance, Ariana Grande is the one who introduced Harley Pasternak to her then boyfriend, Mac Miller, who is now dead, of a fentanyl overdose. Um, what about Elliot Page? Elliot Page was on, on a movie, was from, was from a movie, it was from a movie called Whip It in 2009. Yeah, but there are more recent photos of them together. I mean, doesn't mean they didn't stay I'm just in contact. Saying. And, uh, and then also and Brittany or, Murphy. Or Kim, or Kim Kardashian being that, uh, what does she, she wasn't acting in anything. That's not the reason that she loves Harley smoothies, mm -hmm. right? And Brittany Murphy had a very mysterious death and um, was also working with Harley Pasternak at that, around that time. But also, um, Mac Miller, mm -hmm. on the day he died, was he was scheduled for... Uh, training session with Harley Pasternak. Mm. It's just very weird. 
And the fact that Harley Pasternak has never felt the need to clear his name either of such insane allegations speaks to me. Yeah. Um, it, it seems telling to me. And I just want to take us to the present day, um, or at least their most recent encounter. Kanye West happened to be at a hotel in Dubai in November last year, November 2023. And Harley Pasternak was there too. And they had a strange encounter when they were both there where uh, allegedly Kanye walked up to Harley and tried to hug him and say hello, like be friendly. But Harley said that he, or allegedly felt threatened by Kanye. And he can be seen here at this hotel concierge desk, allegedly calling security on Kanye at this Dubai resort after their run-in together. And he can see the person filming him. <laughs> yeah, and points to the person who's filming him on, on their phone. Um, but after that video came out, um, I, I was surprised I didn't see a lot of reporting on it, but immediately it started a new wave of conspiracies that uh, Harley was allegedly stalking Kanye internationally. <laughs> Look, I don't know if that's true. Uh, well, what do you think? Uh, like, what do you think? What do you make of all this? I think that if Hollywood MK Ultra handlers exist, yeah. they fit the profile of someone like Harley Pasternak. Absolutely. That's all that I can come up with. Yeah, like uh, like my, my biggest question is like, look, I'm not. Uh, I love doing these videos. I love the conspiratorial videos because it allows you to kind of uh, plumb the depths of questions that just have so many like layers. But also, a lot of it is it's untethered, and there's there's places where connections are missing, and that's okay. It's because you're all. I'm just asking questions. Like someone says, I would love to know, like if this is true, what what gives a personal trainer the right to speak to someone that way and not expect to just be fired instantly? Because mm -hmm. certainly that's a level of bravado that doesn't just come from being put there on a paycheck yeah right so who is employing these people there's also a lot of misinformation around these topics like so the there other is. day when taylor swift won her artist of the uh album of the year mm -hmm. right and she's going on stage somebody goes there's taylor swift's uh handler off to the side and it was jack antonoff but there was like a bunch of posts you mean her would, producer yes like it, like and people yeah. were like pointing out saying that's clearly her handler you got to be careful like be be weary of people not asking questions in an open form and just telling you to believe something or being overly sensational i think the idea of finding ends that don't make sense asking reasonable questions is the way to approach stuff like this Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.